session. Here I am with Creek, and uh, we're just waiting for people to arrive. So uh, anyone who's out there on the live stream, um, whether you're on LinkedIn or Facebook Live or YouTube Live or Twitch, um, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. And uh, feel free to write in the chat. All of them will come through here onto my wrists. So uh, hopefully you can feel part of it. Any questions or comments? Um, so our session tonight is going to be looking at training ourselves to be happy and awesome. You know, in life, so many of us are just kind of running through the motions. And uh, there are ways to help things get better. But more than that, this session is to inspire you to wildly make them better for the sake of the world. Like I want a world in the future where everyone is bliss and awesomeness and brilliance all the time. And that comes about from us practicing that. So that's going to be the theme of tonight. Um, let me just check if anyone's written in yet. Cool. So yeah, just waiting. Nice to see some of you guys viewing. Um, yeah. So we'll just wait another minute or two for people to arrive. And, uh, we we have a few little rituals here, like we enter the temple with a sacred moment with a bow. And uh, so for those of us who are here, that's like we're really setting up, entering something sacred within ourselves. And for those of you at home, I hope that you have your own way of imagining stepping into a classroom or stepping into a temple or making space within yourself for that awesome within you to get the attention that it deserves. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, so, uh, I think I'm going to ring the bell and let's, let's head on in and other people can join as they Sounds wish. Awesome. All right. So let's just all take a deep breath. Let everything else step aside. Everything in your mind, everything from the day. Take a deep breath and just imagine it all disappearing. Becoming fully present to this moment, this enlightened being within you. And we're going to start by together setting our intention for this session. Take these intention settings as suggestions. Uh, if it sounds good, I hope you recreate the words, the feelings, the ideas within yourself. Maybe you could use your imagination to make them even better. Or maybe some parts you don't resonate with. You could set your intention for yourself. How can this session help you? So we're setting our intention that we know that what we focus on, what we think about, transforms us. So this is giving ourselves some time to focus on what will help us most what will empower our minds, our thoughts, our feelings. And I just want to invite everyone to take a moment to imagine if your whole self knew that 
in each moment you could recreate yourself, what intention would you set? Who would you become? What would you wish for the world? Who would you be that you could be that change for the world? Is what's important for you today happiness and ease? Is it confidence and expressiveness? Is it virtues and honesty and goodness? Is it a sense of clarity and simplicity? Is it imagining a beautiful life? Great community? Just letting yourself imagine and feel whatever positive things just came to mind and set your intention that this session is for you to cultivate those feelings, those habits, those thoughts. And let's just set the intention a little bit bigger. Not only are we having this positive impact on ourselves, but that overflows to other people. And ultimately, the world of tomorrow is made up of everything that we've all done today. So let's set our intention that we can have a wonderful impact on those around us or our wider community or even set the goal for a world where everyone is working together to create a beautiful humanity. And with that, we can all take a seat. As you can see, there's plenty of space here in the temple. Last week's session, we were kind of full. So, surprised to see the fluctuations. But anyone out there on the live stream, if you can get into VR chat, you're always welcome here in the temple. And uh, please invite your friends. So I want to start this week's session with a thought that was inspired by some experiences I had this week. Um, someone I care about is having a hard time and a lot of upheaval in their life and it it reminded me of so often I've thought about when people are caught up in struggles in their life and they're just spending time in those struggles, in those thoughts, in the social groups that might be causing the troubles, um, in the habits that are bad for them. So often I've thought, what about if they just stopped all of it for a month and went on a retreat and for that whole month, they just practice healthiness and happiness and cultivating states of mind that were positive, trained themselves to be wonderful. You know, I was thinking of people who are like really suffering. It's like a reset button. And... I currently don't have a retreat center where we could offer that, but it's definitely part of the plan. Um, but we don't need a retreat center. We can take that in our lives. Like the spare time that we have. Um, if you were just to put other things aside for a little while and, and exercise and meditate and read inspiring books and practice positivity 
there's a lot of space in our life where we can transform things. And so people here watching, you might not relate to what I just said, someone who's really suffering or stuck, but maybe there's someone you care about who's in that situation. Or maybe you remember a time where you were in that situation. And the reason I'm sharing this is because this this idea of a reset button or of like really stepping into enlightenment, it's not just for when we're having a hard time. Like if you look at the world, there's a lot of great things about the world. There's a lot of wonderful things happening. People are creating great things. There's positive, great communities. But there's also a lot of people who are alone or nervous or shy or angry. Um, there's, there's wars. There are people who just can't find a role in how to work in society. There's a lot of stuff that's not really working. And so this suggestion of a reset button, I'm not actually making it just for the people who are really struggling I actually want every one of us to think about if you're here, what would it be like to take your life up there, to take it from feeling good to feeling blissful, ecstatic. You know, the the words that we have for our emotions from sad to ecstatic. From my experience, the, the spectrum of positive emotions goes way, way, way higher than what we have words for. And uh, I, I want to encourage people to um, be excited to explore that. Like, what would it be like to take your whole spectrum up there? Um, we don't really have words for those good feelings because not that many people spend that time there. So imagine a world where Every one of us was like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling ecstatically blissful today. It's just this is an average day. Um, but, you know, their words we already have, ecstatically blissful. Like, Ten levels higher is what I would like us to be imagining. And, and I'm not just thinking in terms of like our own well-being and positive feelings. I'm thinking of excellent fitness, um, pushing your skills and your body to the limit to feel vibrantly alive. I'm also thinking of our communities and our businesses, like helping everybody find the roles where they can thrive and help the most, like people caring for one another enough to find the ways that really work for each other. And yeah, there, there's great companies out there where the teamwork's wonderful and they help each other in what's needed. And then there are other places where that doesn't happen. So each time, if you remember in the intention setting, I was saying as we lift ourselves up, it makes the world better. Each time you make yourself better, you, you meditate, you make a positive decision, you mentally rehearse some way of being better, you, you physically rehearse some way of being better, you're not just helping yourself you're making the whole world better and so I wanted to come back to that idea of if someone's really struggling having a hard time them having like a month retreat to just recreate their life um, I hope that sounds like a, a reasonable suggestion if someone's like really not got much going on that's or they've got a lot of pain going on creating something awesome is a great alternative but uh, I also want to suggest that that's something that every one of us could envisage wow what if my life's already great what would it be like if I put all my creativity into how great it possibly could be Amazing, did you have something you wanted to share? Yeah, I have a question. Um, so I like the idea of having a month-long retreat of goodness. Um, but how would that translate to everyday life? Like, I can't just get out of my life and do a month of 
pure awesome without my normal life within so how would i incorporate that into my actual day okay that's a great question um so i was thinking if someone is like uh struggling maybe their job's not working or they're unemployed um or maybe you've got some vacation time i was actually thinking of like people taking some time out just to remove and reset um but then working within that idea what if you've got a job what if you've got commitments that you uh really care about um so i was working with one of our sangha members this week around designing the ultimate um routine each day for training themselves and uh he loves meditation so we talked about a 5 minute mindfulness in the morning a 5 minute positive thinking session in the morning a 5 minute positive thinking session in the end of the day um he really wanted to like dive into enlightenment so we also discussed having some compassion meditation each day and um a sprinkling of of laughter meditation and um peace meditation and um confidence meditations we we can all carve out 5 minutes in the morning even when we're really busy if we decide to do it we can um and i guess what i'm suggesting is that we carve out more time to exercise and to cultivate positivity um because it's worth it um and then on weekends we have more time so yeah I, uh my intention for today is actually to inspire everybody to envisage what would be a great um daily routine or weekly routine to fit as much awesomeness into their week as possible now the voice of my skeptical friends i'm remembering them being like oh sitting breathing meditation the time i spend on that i could be spending on other things um so yeah i i want to say that when we set these intentions make it awesome there are schools that do breathing meditation where they just sit and breathe and some people have great results from that and some people will do it for years and have a little more peace but i i want us to be enlightened when you sit and do breathing meditation be excited to watch your brain and be a super brain engineer learn every single moment to be more awake and more alert that you're training yourself to be more conscious that each day it's like noticeably more liberating um yeah i i hope that every one of us when we think about personal development that it's purely exciting and uplifting if there's any part of us where we like oh that seems tedious or that seems like a grind i would hope that we would create a new approach to it imagine if you will if you had the audience of the whole world and they were watching and we had the goal to get the planet enlightened in the next few months when i say enlightened i mean people really happy feeling at ease in their bodies at ease in their lives feeling joyful feeling warm and kind and enjoying each day let's say that's a a good goal <laughs> um i hope the journey to get there is also easy and beautiful and inspiring like if i imagine a world where people are feeling great i feel uplifted and great and i hope that every one of us as we're thinking about our own practice or thinking about leveling up our own practice we do it from a place of excitement and ease and joy amazing how is that as an answer for your question um yeah i think that that's 
a good one. Um, while you were answering my question, I also thought maybe it's not necessarily only making extra time, but maybe I could, like, or somebody could um, change the way they're doing things, like, um, like being mindful throughout the day and uh, watching thoughts and reactions and um, maybe intentionally do things in a better way. Like if I have to make food anyway, I could make it in a way that's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. That's actually a great suggestion. I'm going to throw out a bunch of ways that I've heard of people doing that. And if you can think of other ideas, please jump them in. So you said about making food in a way that's enjoyable. Um, there are people who love to make food. It's a beautiful, sensual experience of flavors and exploration. And there are people who think of it as, as work. And there's everybody in between. So uh, yes, you could think of those people who enjoy it more and make those moments more enjoyable. You could also consciously be trying to design yourself into that blissful enjoyment. That's one level of how we could approach making food. Um, I've also seen people who treat every moment of they making the meal as a mindfulness meditation. They're just really watching their attention, really watching their thoughts and their feelings and being super present with how they are moving through the experience. Um, I've also been around some cultures where the act of making food is like an act of love or spiritual devotion where each moment of making the food they're I've been around people who believe that the feelings they are having while they make the food go into the food. I don't know if that's true, but it's a kind of a nice mental game. Like, I'm going to try and fill this food up with as much happiness and love as I can so that the people who eat it get filled with happiness and love. So yeah, just with making food, there's more ways of approaching that than what I just said. So I've also seen people bring mindfulness or positivity into other chores. Um, maybe cleaning with positive music or cleaning with bliss meditation or cleaning with mindfulness. I've also seen people bring really positive intention to their physical exercise. Maybe it's going for a ride or a walk or a run or a swim and that's a great time to be practicing positive virtues. Like if you're running and thinking about feeling vibrant in your day, it's a, not only a time to um, be able to imagine being vibrant, but the adrenaline and the physical, the physiology of being more uplifted is getting connected in your mind of being a more vibrant person. So uh, yeah, combining meditation and positive training with physical exercise is a great way to squeeze more positive training into your into your day i've seen people um, who listen to deep relaxations and hypnosis when they go to sleep i mean we all fall asleep um, giving yourself a faster way to go to sleep that then puts positive suggestions into your dreams that's totally just putting more positivity into this activity that's happening otherwise. Um, does anyone else have any other thoughts of where you can um, bring mindfulness or positive practice into your day-to-day -day activities? Creek? I do it a lot when I'm listening to other people speak, uh, focusing on how they're speaking, uh, their body language, um, maybe the emotions behind what they're saying, kind of listening to 
maybe the context uh, surrounding their emotions uh, gives me a deeper opportunity to not just appreciate just being in that moment with another person um, but also appreciate what they're saying deeper and um, it then in turn is like kind of practice to listening to what I say to myself and the conversations I have with myself and listening to those kind of inner contexts as well. It makes it a lot more enjoyable, I find. Um, uh, the last suggestion you had of watching the conversation you have with yourself um, all day long, we're thinking things. So yeah, if you watch that lovingly and kindly and curiously you could fill your whole day with meditation and positive thinking i mean you might notice thoughts that are not positive and each time there it's like wow what would it be like to fill this part of me with love or with ease or with happiness um and creek you mentioned uh, conversations with others as a great way to fit in more intentional practice um so yeah you were saying to um can you say again the things you'll focus on in conversations with other people sure so oh no Okay, to the people on the live stream, I'm sorry. Sometimes having multiple cameras crashes a live stream. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, welcome back. Excellent. Um, so, Creek, would you like to repeat what you were saying about... No worries. <laughs> I like being mindful during conversation with other people, especially when they're speaking. I like to try to take people's words now a lot more literally than I used to. As well though, listening to the tone of their voice, the emotion behind it, and kind of creating a deeper, maybe empathy for the context of their experience as they speak. It also, allows me to respond in a way that I think is a lot more present and reasonable and also it is kind of practice for learning how to listen to myself in also the same way and then you could extrapolate that to listening to the environment, watching deeply, observing reality, so on. Um, so I want to focus just on the part of bringing our practice into conversations with other people um, it's such a massive scope like every conversation there are multiple different topics different feelings different relationships between all the people different beliefs and attitudes like in in any conversation there's just this vast world in which to explore and so there are so many parts in which you could take your focus. And uh, some of the ways that I've seen, as well as learning to be more present with their tone and um, 
trying to really literally hear exactly what they're saying rather than um, projecting what we think they're saying. Um, other practices I've seen in conversation is um, compassion meditation. Every conversation, just trying to feel more love and care for this person right in front of you. Which is great and lovely when things are warm and nice. And it's amazingly helpful if there's ever a disagreement. Or some, maybe some tension that had been ongoing. Approaching it while in a love and kindness meditation is just really transforms that experience. Another practice people have during conversations with others is um, what can I learn most from this person? What are, the th- what are the words or the ideas or the ways of being that would help me most? Or what could I ask that would help me most? Another practice I've seen is uh, what could I do here that would be the most helpful? What could I share or talk about that as I look at this person, how do I bring love or ease or wisdom to them? Uh, Another practice I've seen people do is just being really open, asking someone what do they need, how could you help, or what are their dreams in life. So asking questions that you hope will bring the best out of that person. Um, So there's just a few suggestions of what you can do to practice positivity in conversation. But I'm sure if you spent another minute or two brainstorming, you could come up with all kinds of ways of practicing awesomeness in all your conversations. (sighs) So to Smile who just joined us and anyone who's joining in on the live stream, we were talking about how to practice um, and cultivate goodness each day, whether it's some time each morning and each night to practice the states of mind or the feelings that will help you, whether it's exercising and while you exercise, pumping yourself up also with positive thoughts, Um Maybe it's taking time to go deep into meditation and make really powerful altered states of mind, practice them so they stay with you. And then Amazer said, well, what about other ways rather than carving out extra time? What about putting it into our life? So we talked about while making food or doing chores, um, how do you approach that with positivity? And Creek suggested in our conversations, how do we practice um, enlightenment or goodness while we're having conversations with people? Um, And I think maybe just as you walked in, we were saying that um, if you watch the conversations you have with yourself, every single one of them is a chance to uh, be more loving to yourself, to be mindful of what are you doing to yourself and what else could you do are the thoughts you're having helpful are they happy are they easeful if that thought I just had was to come true would that make my life better do I want to keep having that thought what are the kind of thoughts that would actually make me better or make my life better So when I first read a meditation book, they suggested five minutes of meditation every day with the suggestion that 
five minutes every day, in a week or two, you're just going to be hungry for more. It'll be so easy. Five minutes will be like, oh, wow, I'm just getting started into this beautiful piece. Or um, I can I can glimpse into enlightenment. I can glimpse that there's this great awareness and peace that I could have. And I just want to have more. And so I did that five minutes a day. And then a week later, it was six minutes. And then a week later, it was ten. And then a week later, it was twenty. So I... Uh, really encourage every one of us whatever your current practice is to like dedicate that that amount is what you'll stick to each day and that you'll approach each one with love and joy so that you uh, just want more of it Um, I took a similar approach around the same time to exercise I had never been working out but, uh, you know, I was reading all these self-help books around mental development, physical health, memory and cognitive development. And so in some of those physical health books, they were, they were saying something similar about regular exercise. And the exercise I chose at the time was running. And so I just decided that I'd run half a mile um, every day. Um, oh, sorry to the rest of the world. I happen to be in the U.S. at the moment. So, yeah, um... So I'd run less than a kilometer every day. And uh, I was lucky that I I lived near a beach. So uh, there was a very straight path there and back. And then after I'd been doing that run every day for a week, I just wanted to go a bit further and a bit further. And I had uh, hundreds of kilometers that I could have run to. It was... I never ran to the end of that beach. Um, but yeah, it, it just became a run each morning that got bigger and bigger as I got fitter and fitter. Um, I got to the point where I was easily running um, 10 kilometers every day, every morning, not to mention all the extra running because I had just all this energy overflowing. After going to a party, I'd... I'd run home, even if it was a 20k run, just because I felt vibrant and alive. And I hope our approach to meditation is the same. Our brains are just excited for more bliss and happiness that um, while you're traveling somewhere, it's like, oh, it's a little moment to squeeze in some more joy into myself. Um And I was saying how these different practices help one another. So not only was I doing positive thinking while I was running, but I set it up so that I would be running as the sun came up each morning. And this feeling of running during the sunrise, not only is the the day beginning a nice idea, I feel like physiologically there's something in our bodies that when the sun comes up it's extra invigorating it might have just been beautiful um, and I haven't actually looked up research for it but it it feels to me that um, seeing a sunrise uh, for our like primal ancestors was this kickstart to ourself so I definitely felt that and um, I, I also would run along the beach and and pick up trash and just feel like I was purifying the beach as I purified my mind and made the world more beautiful. And that was like really heartwarming just to have this huge pile of trash while I ran along um, and uh, feel like I was making the world more beautiful every day. Um... I also would do other things in my imagination to make that more invigorating. Yeah, I was running by myself, but I would imagine that I had other people running with me. And bit by bit, I would imagine hundreds of people running, inspired to enlighten the world together. 
Um, some people might think that's kind of sad. Some guy running along just imagining that he has friends. <laughs> but um, I, uh, it was totally invigorating. So even though in that chapter of my life, running along the beach, I, I didn't get a big crowd of enlightened people, it's, it's part of my, my mission and my sense of community to have a lot of people that practice awesomeness together. And we have it here in this temple and on the live stream. And um, I've, I've set up these communities in the real world and had hundreds of people join them. So even at, though at the time I didn't know what my community would look like, Imagining this wonderful, invigorating thing made me run faster, made me feel better, and it nudged my creativity in a certain direction. So I hope every one of you can find activities that you love that you can use to inspire your future. Which direction are you going to imagine your life, your social life, your creativity, your creations... So we've got a few more people joining in on the live stream. And we, we've been talking about how to fit positivity practice into our life each day. Um, does anyone have any questions or thoughts around that? I'm going to jump into another topic in just a moment. Yes, Creek, please. So I think that there's a lot to say about the wisdom of tying a... Um, maybe creative visualization to a physical experience that share a similar kind of wisdom. And I think meditation has a lot of that built in, right? So we, in our mind, um, usually focus an awareness on some level of an experience while also having the physical experience tied with that. I think that does a lot for speeding up a process of uh, even just making it feel more real or uh, integrating it in past meditation it makes it, I think, more real. I guess you could say uh, even something as simple as writing down what you want to do because you're physically tying an idea to a physical format at the same time does a lot of the legwork pushing it into reality so just wanted to add that I think that's pretty cool that meditation does that and the running thing was doing that as well so I've definitely had awesome experiences with dance dance and positivity go so well together just telling myself that for this song, it's a confidence dance. And for this dance, it's all about ease. And like every little movement that I make, I'm just feeling ease in my body. Or I'll even forget about my body and just let it dance by itself while I practice the feeling of ease in myself. Just dropping into greater ease and greater ease and I've done happiness dancing and love dancing and um, I've even done math dancing like just letting my mind visualize multi-dimensional spaces while I dance like it's amazing what we can do within ourself during activities um, people find great practice from from yoga there's a, a, a long culture of yoga and positive cultivation going well together or meditation and yoga working well together. I'm not much of a painter, but I've definitely heard a lot of people say that painting with intention, they brought in new perspectives into their life or new kinds of relationships. Or um, Amaza and I we took a bunch of photos and, and just uh, put them together in Google Photos to make one big photo of our vision for our life. And a year later, most of those photos came true. It's like we created this image vision board for ourselves. 
Um, so yeah, there is a real beauty in creating physically. Creek? Um, just kind of a last thought. Um, part of me feels that there's something a bit, maybe they're working to the same goal, um, but I feel like there's something a bit slow isn't a good word but maybe kind of like a trickle effect um when we're doing the kind of visualization and creative um inspiration or awareness and then tying it to a physical format i think that that is helpful but it's also really transient whereas the like permanent or like the more long lasting effects of it are really hard to notice um Whereas uh, with insights, I feel like they come crashing like a wave and they last, uh, as far as I can tell, permanently. Um, do you think that the f tying to a physical format, that kind of vision, leads to insights? Or is, there a, or is gaining insights at an entirely different practice? Um, so, insights. Um, I've found insights happen from, um, not necessarily a certain practice, but from having conversations around certain topics. Sometimes in mindfulness meditation, you'll be watching what's happening within and you're like, oh, now I can really see I've been thinking that thing and I've been then feeling that thing. Oh. So yeah, definitely in meditation, we can find insights. Um, but I also have spoken to people where their practice isn't, they don't have any of that idea of like seeing the brain programming behind it and they don't get many insights at all. It's just a relaxation kind of thing. Um, and then I see met a lot of people who do have no meditation practice and they love to talk about philosophy and consciousness and they'll read different perspectives from all different philosophers and cultures, and they have a lot of great insights. So, um, yeah, insight is something that we cultivate through um, looking at perspective, um, reading wisdom. Um, and also, you can read some amazing wisdom, and it can just sound like fluff. And then you meditate on it or you keep thinking about it. And then suddenly you see how it applies to everything and it's super powerful. So, um, but you will be less likely to have had that insight into this amazing perspective if you hadn't read about it or had conversations about it. Um, so, yeah. Having conversations around mind shifting perspectives is super great and approaching your mind analytically and and trusting that you'll be able to see how certain patterns keep happening and that you could have completely different patterns with a different approach they they're great great things to do having this intention for insights and these practices around insights um now, you were saying, hey, what about these other things you cultivate? They're transient. Um, I would say that even insights can be transient too. Um, so if I, if I cultivate um, feeling good in social situations and then for the rest of my life, each time I go into a social situation, I'm enjoying it, that could be forever. It doesn't have to be transient. It, it could even get better every time. And even though I'm not practicing it anymore, it continues to improve. Um, so, uh, yeah, insights, cultivation, we, we, we keep cultivating them. We keep growing them. We keep making them better. Some things will just take on a positive life of their own. Some things will fade without attention. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, Watching our minds carefully and keep putting energy into the important stuff is really my thought around that.
So uh, we just had a couple more people join us in the temple. Thank you for being here. We're also live streaming. Um, I encourage you to ask any questions or share anything you want. Just just know that it's also live streaming. Um, so we have been talking about um, practicing being awesome, practicing happiness, practicing confidence. And I, I, I started today with talking about you know, we're all kind of going through the motions in life. What would it be like to push the reset button completely? You know, some people are like lost or hurting and there's a lot of upheaval in their life. And like for someone in that situation, it just seems so clear to me that that's just a an amazing time to be like, hey, what would it be like if I just totally started from scratch? What kind of happiness and awesomeness would I create? And then we were talking about if you don't have that time and space to like have a retreat, um, how would you fit these practices into your day? Like squeezing in some exercise in the morning or some mindfulness or some positive thinking. And then we were talking about in your conversations with others or with yourself, watching more carefully and trying to make each conversation have something positive for you. So yeah, that was what we covered so far. It's like, bringing positivity into our chores and into our meals and into our conversations and sitting and intentionally practicing positivity, whether it's meditation or positive art or um, positive writing. But the next thing I wanted to talk about was to get us excited about what do we actually do. So yes, some of the positive practices are fairly straightforward. Like if I talk about happy dancing and so you're just or maybe it's not straightforward if you haven't done it before but so for that it's like each movement I make I try to feel a bit of happiness in it and then wow my hands feeling happy and then it's really easy to like put some more happiness in so you just let the happiness carry you away in the dance but then what about the some of the other things we said like kindness meditation um there are a lot of kindness meditations you can read or that you can follow on YouTube or there's there's monks around the world in temples running kindness meditations. So um, uh, basically it's the practice of thinking of the people you already care for and letting that feeling of care grow. And maybe it's not just growing it. Maybe you also want to shape it a certain way. How do I care about these people in a way that that helps me or that um, is soothing? Sometimes, I know for me when I was younger, I had never really had anyone say I love you except for while they were angry. So the idea of love made me cry. Um, so yeah, thinking about caring in a way that just felt nice was a practice. And when I first started that, that was like pretty hard, but practicing a little bit each day and knowing that I would succeed eventually, it felt nice and it felt nicer and then it felt nicer and then it felt really good. Um, so I wanted to talk about different actual practices. So I talked about um, love and kindness meditation shaping it to feel good and also making it bigger and bigger or happiness meditation or positivity meditation or bringing uh, different meditations into your dancing or into your exercise. Um, So while we're doing these cultivations, our mind's a really amazing place. Like right now while I'm speaking, some of you are mostly hearing words. And maybe that's making you think of other words. Some of you are seeing examples about what I'm saying, what that's going to make you think of. Some of you are visualizing what I'm saying and just literally thinking of the words I'm saying, not necessarily thinking of ways you could put it into your own life. Some of you, the main focus of of what you're experiencing is feeling what I'm saying. Whether it's a feeling in yourself or feeling the tones in the way I say it, there's so many ways that our minds work. 
And so not just when you're listening to me, but when you're thinking to yourself, you have all these different ways that you work. Um, some of you, when you hear these different things, you might have actually felt like you were dancing. Or when we talk about cooking, um, you might have actually felt your body cooking. Be like, oh yeah, I, re- I remember that experience. Or I'm practicing cooking with a positive feeling. So um, when it comes to actively making new transformation, I want to encourage all of you to be like a brain artist. So when you, let's say you want to imagine feeling at, at peace with life. I, I hope you go and do all the different things that I just said. So you, you have the words, peace with, uh, feeling at peace. Things are okay. I feel comfortable in myself. But I hope you also have the feeling. Ah, oh, oh, that's what it would feel like. Ah. <sighs> And you, you also imagine moving in your body. What's it feel like to actually be at peace in the things you do each day? And I hope you also visualize it. Where do you go? How do you um, move through your day with peace? Maybe see yourself in your imaginary mirror. What's it like to look at yourself feeling peaceful? Um what kind of attitudes or ideas would you have of being at peace with yourself? So just for this one idea of I'm at peace, there's, there's so many different ways of practicing it. And if we combine all of them, they, they like tie together and get stronger. Visualizing it, feeling it, saying it, conceptualizing it, physically practicing it. And so that's all just around, I am at peace. And any other kind of positive change, um, you can also bring all your creativity to that. And uh, notice as I was describing, I'm at peace, and I talked about all these different, they call them modalities, seeing, hearing, concepts, feeling, physically feeling, emotionally feeling. Um, I squeezed all that into a, like a minute or two. So you could spend a couple of minutes cultivating inner peace. And in those couple of minutes, you could say it to yourself and you can feel it and then you can visualize it and then you can think about the ideas of what it'd be like to have inner peace all the time. So for those few minutes of of practicing, you bring your whole self to it. Now, I also want to emphasize the way you approach it. I want you to feel like, hey, this is me being an artist. This is me being a designer. Just like you would, I don't know, we all have different arts. Some of us like to make avatars. Some of us like to do writing or painting. Some of us are engineers. We like to design stuff. I hope you take the same excitement as you approach your own brain. Like, what am I creating in myself Okay, again. Again, people on the live stream, sorry. <laughs> let's let's run back into the temple. Thanks. It's good to be back. So, um, Don Shadow, were you sharing something or asking a question? Uh, yeah, I actually want to ask a question. Actually. I have been doing the deep relax- relaxation that you uh, suggested me to do uh, recently. Well, wonderful. For, uh, couple, couple, couple of days uh, in a row. But I noticed something that changed my sleep is um, 
My sleep seems more disturbed than it used to be since I started doing that. Is that actually normal or? Um. Let me tell everybody what you what you're talking about, and then answer your question. So, um, there's a a lot of recordings you can get, like hypnosis recordings or meditation recordings that focus on relaxation. And I have one that I recorded where you tense up your muscles and then relax. And it the intention is it trains your body to really let go, to really relax. And many people find it's really good to do before sleeping. Because it just knocks you off into sleep. Um, I used to have trouble sleeping, and I listened to one of these recordings every day, and it just trained me that boom, I'm just out when I want to sleep. Um, so, Don Shadow, to ask, answer your question, um, I, I don't really want to think of what's normal. Like different things happen to different people, and most people, when they listen to this recording or one of the guided relaxations find themselves deep, sleeping more deeply and their body's more relaxed and in the morning they feel more refreshed. But the reason I, I don't want to say what's normal is because maybe... Um, yeah, yeah. So maybe, um, maybe the first day or two are good and then maybe for some random reason on the third day um, something else was going on and then you are... Uh, thought of that as connected to the recording maybe or maybe as you went to do it some people would be like whoa i'm gonna just melt into peace and maybe you were like oh i'm kind of skeptical of meditation i don't know what's going to happen and so then maybe that's what your brain was practicing along with the relaxation techniques so i don't i don't want to necessarily like explain why Awesome. All right, so I was just kind of putting out some explanations of why. I don't really know why. But um, my suggestion is that before you play the recording is you imagine that you're going to sleep really well through the night. Exactly. Like you visualize and you say to yourself, I'll sleep the whole night through. I'll sleep really deeply um, I'll feel really good. And priming our brain like that, it often works really, really well. So um, I, I guess that's like the main thing I want to say is try that. Please come back next week and tell us how amazing that changed the experience. Awesome. Um, for those of you who were here earlier, I, I mentioned people use hypnosis or sleep meditation. So yeah, Dawn Shadow's just given us one example of one of the ways that people do that. Um, uh, for, uh, can I just add a note? Please. For those who are interested into looking into it, you can find it on SoundCloud and just basically search Neodex. Is that it? I think it is. Oh no, it's under my real name. So it's Fraser Kirkman, Deep Relaxation. Yeah, I'll I'll put it in the in the vi description of the video and in the Discord. Thanks, Dawn Shadow. Smile. Do you have a question? I I don't. Okay, just had your hand up a little bit. Um, so Creek, you had a question. ago um but i keep seeing uh the same kind of habitual uh little jump of anxiety when and i'm gonna ask you about this so when i'm listening mindfully during conversation and kind of i i guess picking up on the different modalities that i'm creating in my mind um i'm i find little tinges of anxiety not knowing if I'm creating expectations with certain modalities 
Does that make any sense? Or it's like imagining somebody's tone I'm feeling off. They must be feeling in this sort of way because that is how I'm imagining it. And then I'll have this moment where I'll notice kind of almost like a a physical tightness in like my lower abdomen. Like, ah, oh, be careful. Um, you know, this could be wrong. It's something I just wanted to ask you about. So I think it's a great habit to double check with yourself. You know, so often people will hear someone else and they'll just assume, oh, I think that they're feeling judgmental or whatever the feelings you were, you think you heard. So yeah, it's great to double check and be like, oh, I'm not actually sure if that is right. But I would hope that like self-reflection, that freedom brings you a sense of ease and happiness. Like, oh yeah, here's something I could watch for more or I could ask about. Or hey, maybe it doesn't even matter. I'll just keep being as lovely and kind as possible. Um, so if I, I go back to the the core theory of like what we practice is what we get is I would just suggest imagining that when you have this self checking that it feels good and rehearse that habit the habit of hey when I when I double check something hi ah, it feels liberating you know I if I imagine tenseness if I imagine tenseness in my um oh here we go if I imagine tenseness in my gut, um, what do I want to practice that's the opposite of that? Is like, ha, huh, yeah, maybe they didn't feel like that. So you're just rehearsing that when you notice that your brain will do a different pattern is uh, super helpful. So actually, that's a really good point. I've been talking about practicing happiness or confidence or to enjoy the food you make. But actually here we were talking about how you react when you're thinking about once what someone said. The amount of space for creativity in transforming ourselves is huge. Like look around this temple. This was made by somebody. And it's not just like oh there's an enlightened being at the at the back and there's a banner at the front and there's a stage here somebody painted these dots on the wood somebody else chose the book that's here on the th on the banister and in ourselves if you think of everything about you as like a, an art form there are so many little details there's the big things what sports do you play or what kind of activities do you go? Or how do you feel each day? But there are so many little details. And every one of them, you can go in and you can practice. What would I like that to be? You can go up and repaint this section. Oh, yeah. When I question a thing, it makes me feel good. As opposed to when I question a thing, oh, it made me feel tight. Like every little part of yourself, every thought you have about yourself, Every one of them is a spot where you could bring creativity. Now, I've heard some people be like, whoa, well, that's like a really, that's like just too intense. But actually, yeah, it's super intense. There's more thoughts and more parts to ourselves than we could ever handle. So then what do we do? Um, it's, this, it's the same in life. There's more options and more choices in every moment than you could ever really handle. So we just bring our creativity and goodness like what do you want to focus on maybe what's super important right now is focusing on ease and happiness and every day you're just like, ah, actually yeah i'm going to keep practicing feeling at ease that's great or maybe you just really want to practice on like feeling vivid when you do art or maybe you really want to practice on hey when i meditate and watch my mind it's a beautiful experience um I, I would suggest to people they pick a, a couple of things a month and they just really practice that every day. And then when you notice other stuff, hey, I'm excited to be making myself an enlightened being. I, oh, that thought's not so helpful. Let me come up with another one there. So you're kind of like always playing this game of positivity. 
Um, but just do it in a light-hearted way. Like, there are these things that I've chosen that are really going to transform this month. And I'm just, like, generally just putting positivity around. That's a way I've found of just, like, approaching your mind and your life in a way that's easeful and helpful and good. Now, I said picking two things a month. Um, there was a time in my life where I had 15 things that I'd visualize every morning, every afternoon, and every night before I went to bed. And, uh, yeah, every one of them would have transformed really wildly at the end of the month. Or sometimes it would just take just a little bit longer while my subconscious like put it all together. Um, but yeah, that's that's intense. Like that's a it's a it's a good solid fifteen minutes in the morning and the night and the middle of the day. So yeah, I really recommend everyone has like a couple of things that you decide to make awesome for a month. And if you want to do more, then you can you can do more too. So now, I just want to check. I've been doing this for a while, and it it makes perfect sense to me to practice different feelings and to visualize different habits. But for some people, if it's a new idea or if you've never heard about it or thought about it, that could still sound really foreign. So I just wanted to ask everybody, um, does it sound like an exciting idea? Um, Do you feel like you could practice it do you see what to do do you have any questions about it yes i mean this session's for you guys to be as amazing as possible so i i want to be here for you it's not just ideas i want you walking away from this session being more awesome every day until the entire universe is enlightened Um, So people on the live stream, if you have questions too, please throw them in the chat. I'll keep checking it. Yes, please, Dawn Shadow. uh, uh, Um, So there are lots of different practices. If you are wanting to do breathing meditation where you watch your mind and just be still and watch in your mind, I would say do five minutes a day. And I also recommended having a couple of things that you practice being awesome at. So two things should be two to four minutes in the morning and at night. So yeah, I would say that's a really great start. If... if Five minutes plus the f- four minutes is... If ten minutes a day is too much, pick one of them, the breathing meditation or the positive practice, and do that thing every day. But yeah, I would I would hope that ten minutes throughout your day, everyone can handle, and I'd say that it's super worth doing and awesome. So yeah, five minutes of breathing meditation um, and... a. F- uh, a few minutes on some specific thing that you're practicing. Peace, happiness, kindness, um, responding well when you question something, being great at art, like some specific thing you want to transform a couple of minutes in the morning and a couple of minutes before you go to bed. That would be my super starter kit that I'd say would be good for everybody. Um, a hundred percent. Yes. So there's a lot of ways that it can doing the breathing meditation. Um, if you are just focusing on the breath and anything else that you notice going on, you're like, Oh, that can wait. I'm just going to breathe. People find that that just by itself is like their mind settles and they get into the sense of peace and you spend more time in peace your body your brain learns peace it's like the the alternative to anxiety and stress so yes 
definitely one surefire answer that traditional mindfulness meditation can help with stress and anxiety. Um, if I then also look at the thing I was saying about practicing brain engineering or like watching your thoughts, um, well, watching your thoughts is the traditional meditation of mindfulness, and then practicing new thoughts is this brain engineering. So if you notice, oh, I get anxious um, when uh, there's these certain kind of people around. When you notice that, you're like, oh, okay, that's where it's coming from. So I'm going to practice when, when I'm in that situation, this is what I want to feel. Um, some people feel anxious when there's a loud noise. And so you could practice, hey, when I hear a loud noise, I'm just going to tell myself everything's okay. So whatever the things are that have been causing you some anxiety, each one of those, you could retrain that thing and practice how do you want to feel or respond to that thing. Dawn Shadow, does that answer make sense? Does it seem... Yeah, it does. Thank you. It does. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and... Uh, one other thing I'd add is I mentioned mindfulness, breathing meditation can get us into peace. Um, the recording that you have, um, hopefully after you've done the full body scan and relaxed your whole body, after you've done it for a while, you'll also feel relaxed in your emotions. So like you have this feeling of deep peace. And so each time you do that, if you notice, oh, this is what it's like to really be peaceful then uh, you get to practice that more. And now that's just one recording. That works better for some people than others. There's other guided meditations. Um, some are more visual. Some are more suggestions. So trying different guided meditations and finding the ones that take you into um, nice feelings. You might find other stuff that is just feels great for you it's like the opposite of anxiety and uh it's it's not just relaxation people can get into i've had guided meditations where i felt feelings better than i have words for i just had this fountain of joy that just kept filling me up until i was happier than i knew happiness could be or I relaxed my body, and so I kind of forgot about my arms and forgot about my legs. And then I just felt like I was massive, like I was the size of the room, which felt confident and powerful. Um, sometimes in just doing breathing meditation, I'd feel this like electricity going up and down my spine, which felt exhilarating. And just having more beautiful, positive feelings in your emotional palette means you're probably going to dip into the positive feelings more than the other feelings. So yeah, exploring and practicing awesome feelings is awesome. Creek, you have a question? of a complex one but I'll try to be as quick as I can with it so I've noticed that when I'm already in a place of mindful peace the things that I suppose would trigger anxieties before um, don't at all in any way that's really fantastic there is no process of seeing the trigger interact with my experience and then watching the habitual kind of maybe negative or unskillful reaction happen and then applying like oh well i'll just tell you know myself like things are okay and then it goes away right it's just helpful to just already be in the state so my question is though is by constantly maybe even in a way attaching to this state of peace of observation am i limiting how fast i'm learning about myself as opposed to just experiencing and then creating 
I suppose, more coping mechanisms, or, or is it better to sit in that state of observation and peace? I hope that's a good way to explain what I'm saying. I think it's a great question. Let me try to describe the first thing in my own words, just to see if I captured it and help more people maybe get what you meant. And then I'll also see if I get your question right. So Creek was saying that um, practicing awareness, when he first started, he could see someone said something that upset him. And then he'd notice it and he'd be like, okay, let go of the upset. Or he could see some reaction to this situation. Oh, I've noticed that. Okay, let it go. Go back into peace. Or you can imagine any kind of reaction any of us have. When he's practiced watching his mind, he can see the ones that aren't helpful. Watch it carefully and then move into what he wants instead. Creek, is that what you said at the first bit? Cool. And then, when you're in a really positive state, a lot of those negative things never even get to us. Like, if you've just fallen in love, like, you could be running down the street and falling in a puddle of mud and you just laugh. And But if you were having a really shitty day, you'd be like, oh, look, I'm stuck in the mud and everything's dirty and shit. Um, and um, when you're at a party and you're laughing wildly, someone might give you a little look on their face that maybe would upset you if you were like lonely and sad that day but while you're having a great time you don't even notice it and uh if you're enlightened and blissful and your whole life purpose is just to spread positivity stuff could happen that would upset a lot of other people and to you it's it's nothing you're just still focused on bliss and happiness and positivity so Creek's question was, is he missing out on observing his mind if he's just up in that positivity? Creek, is that is that a good capture of your question? That was perfect. Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely perfect. So the question is, is um, what do we want to practice? Um, I would hope that forever you'd be in that enlightened mind. And you'd be observing how to be in this enlightened mind. And if there was ever a moment that something kind of dragged you down, you'd notice it and you'd be awesome and you'd just get back into feeling great, being your best self. Um, I could give you an example, hopefully by absurdity. Um, you're not going to go into massive anger where you hate everybody and figure out how to deal with that just just because it's it's real and like it it's not real it's just like it's another way of being and hopefully most people can get that that way of being is is not great and yeah i've been in that place and anyone who's in that place i would thoroughly recommend um practice some happiness meditation or some loving kindness meditation as soon as possible it's just a much better way to be to not be full of anger so hopefully you can see that that's not a thing that you need to go in and practice and so i would say that all of those other things that you're like oh but that was that was normal um it doesn't have to be normal you found more beautiful states of mind keep writing them go into imagine like this this ease and this goodness and positivity that you've gotten to that's amazing is actually just like one step and there's like 50 steps higher into enlightenment. Just focus on there. Go there. That would be awesome. my answer to that question. But there's going to be people in your life who are still reacting to that other stuff. And so just by loving them and caring for them, you'll get to practice how to talk about them and how to navigate them, even though you don't have to navigate the stuff for yourself. Thank you. Actually, I want to say, um, spending time in other people's confusion and pain, it's great to care, but it's not always helpful. Sometimes it's good to have a time where you 
cultivate happiness and peace for a while. You know, if 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 all your friends are stuck in the mud, um, you can't really help them get out of the mud. So spending a bit of time to like wash yourself off and like I don't know, get some stilts or a, an airplane or something, sometimes is a good approach. So that that way you can have a different perspective when you're talking to the friends who are stuck in the mud. So yeah, I, I, I like to have this vision where we all love and care for one another and we're all supporting one another to be creating an enlightened world. 100%. Yes, I want us all to support each other. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's this game you play with yourself. Like, how much time of what do I focus on that's going to help me help the most? So yes, you... Having peace and joy and ease helps you help others. So, and you know, not everybody is going to really thrive going through other people's triggers and pains. And, and some people, the way they approach it, might actually just cause more trouble. So, yeah, when I said, "Oh, you're going to spend time with people there," that's not necessarily true. It's it's not always the best thing for everybody to do. Um, maybe the best way you can help people who are having those triggers is to just be joy and love and positivity and for them to see that and just want to come and hang out with you in that bliss and joy. Yeah. Let me check their live stream. Oh, um... So, Giles has asked, uh, there was a mention of communities that have been created, and last week a community was mentioned. Which communities that would be good to join? So, I think often I'm speaking about this community, you on the live stream, people coming here in VR. Um, this is the community that's immediate for me right now. Um, next week, we're having a real-world activity in Silicon Valley, and we plan to grow that real-world community, keep having events um, that inspire and enlighten one another, also where people make a lot of friends, and they're like positive, uplifting friends. Um, before we lived in Silicon Valley, we lived in Vienna, and we had about 500 people in our Facebook group who would come to regular events. And Giles, you and I hung out in Eden Sanctuary. And there was a sense of community and activities there too. Um, so our vision with United Visions, with this movement of positivity, is that these communities will be set up all over the world. And everyone will know where in their local community to, to go to have people who will help them and uplift them and care about them. I'm sorry that we don't have that right now in the world. So I would encourage all of us to have a session like this with your friends, whether it's like watching this live stream together with a couple of friends who you know would be interested, or maybe it's not about this live stream at all. Maybe it's have have a positive art session with a couple of friends or um, um, yeah, I, I wish that I had communities that I could suggest everywhere but at the moment I don't um, I explored a lot of different communities that are about positivity um, I went to many different religions and many different civil society groups there's a lot of groups in the world where they have community and they have some wisdom and some positivity. A lot of them also have beliefs that I find unhelpful. So generally my approach to recommending something is if, if there's nothing there that I think could be dangerous or misleading. So uh, that's my bar for recommending. So it makes it pretty hard to recommend stuff. Um... So, yeah, I guess what I'd recommend most is think about 
your friends who you care about the most or who you think would be open to doing some kind of positive activity and um, create those activities or watch this live stream together or find some VR headsets and come here together um, and yeah I hope each one of us could imagine that that community of friends that we create could actually become a really great circle of positive friends that could then be a beacon of light for other people in your city. Um, so I, I guess also if, if any of your friends are watching or see this stream and they have positive events they can recommend, that could also be great too. Um, so yeah, I would love people to share this live stream with their friends so that you can discuss these ideas and build community together. Or, you know, make your own post around positive community. Um, us figuring out how to share it more how to have these kind of conversations is something the world needs. We need to get better at creating positive community. Um, so yes, I'm, that's all I've got for now around that answer. Um, as for you here in the temple, some of you are regulars and I love seeing you regularly. And for those of you who are new, I really hope that um, this is interesting or inspiring, but even better, I hope the ideas like keep helping you and you keep feeling better and your perspective and your feelings just get more awesome all the time and that you want to keep coming back. Not just so that we have more time to get more enlightened, but I also hope that we become friends and we create a bigger community where more people could come and then it's not just me up on the stage, but we have every one of you also helping other people be more creative, be more happy, find peace. Every one of us has had different life stories or situations where we've applied these teachings to, to help. And your stories will be able to help somebody who's going through something similar. This is why I want an awesome super community. And like I said, ultimately, I'd like to have these real-world communities all over the world. Actually, my, my grand vision is that everyone in the world feels like that they're part of Team Humanity. We're all helping each other to be enlightened. That's, that's really what I want to create. You don't even need to find community. The whole world is working as community. And I hope you all feel that that seems right and that you're part of helping make that happen. And if that sounds too far out, it's hippie shit, I just want you to be happy and you to be awesome. But yeah, I hope that that idea is inspiring and that we can all be working together to make it happen. Um, Giles, if you've got a follow-up question, I'll, I'll, I'm open to it. Um, and maybe offline we could talk about people I know from your town who I could suggest... Hmm. Um, so does anyone else have any questions or comments? I wanted to respond to something Creek said before. He asked a question and he said, oh, he'd asked similar questions before. And I want to say that's totally okay. You know, I said when we're practicing a positive transformation, do it every day for a month. Um, or we can read some great wisdom and just not even notice it until we meditate on it and we're like, wow, that's life-changing. Like these positive things, they're like, they have to grow into our minds. If you take a garden where there's weeds, like there's, there's work to pull out the weeds and to plant awesome stuff. And some weeds might come back some more and you've got to like pull them out. And 
you might plant some seeds and they might not really grow. And then you plant some more and then one of them just goes wild. Like I've got this pumpkin plant that's grown up into our balcony and covered in pumpkins. I planted hundreds of seeds, but just one of them went wild. So um, it's the same thing. You ask the question a few times and there might be just one way that I answer it and you're like, boom, that's got it. Or maybe it just happens to be the right diet day that you're ready to feel it in a way that's like, oh yeah, I can transform that. So I'm totally okay with talking about things over and over. You might see I repeat similar ideas a lot because every time I say them, I feel them more and they help me more. And until you're enlightened, like every moment, bliss and ease, there's more space, there's more chance for you to be more aware of every little thought, for you to be more empowered and excited that, hey, you can imagine something else. And so, yeah, if you if you hear me saying them again every time, please try and feel it stronger. Please try and be it more. Um... So I have one last thought I want to share for our topic for today. And then I'm going to guide a meditation. Um, most of these sessions will have meditations through the session. But today we had a lot of ideas and topics. So um, we're going to finish with a meditation and then finish with our dedication. And then we'll hang out outside. Um, so let me just check the live stream. Or if any of you have any other questions or comments, we'll just have a minute or two until we begin okay so um so one other thought that i really wanted to share is um that uh when it comes to uh how we um how we approach our minds we i talk about like we're going through the motions so this is how i feel every day i feel okay I feel okay. Oh, I could do some brain programming. Oh, I could make myself feel a little bit better. The natural thing that a lot of us have is like, we're either just still doing the same pattern, or when you know you could change, we'll imagine a little bit better. But the truth is, you spending a couple of weeks imagining that every day, that's what your brain will practice, and then boom, you've got this new habit, feeling a little bit better. But you can actually imagine being happy. It might not feel real. It might not feel yourself. But you can actually imagine being happy. And so if you practice that every day, uh, it might take a week before you start to kind of glimpse it and feel it. But hey, then you're feeling it. And then you're practicing it. And boom, you've jumped there. So, you know, in in Buddhism, they talk about liberation. Um, And this is what I'm getting to right now. Freeing our minds not actually kind of being stuck where you are right now, but hey, if I could brain program anything, what would I imagine? If you could have any feeling you want, or if you could have any habit you want, what would it be? And when you're asking yourself these questions, like what do I actually want to practice? Even if it feels far out, please give it a go. You know, practicing something three times a day is pretty epic. And it's wild how it can just get stronger and stronger in yourself and how massively you can transform yourself. So I hope that idea is inspiring. Wow, what could I feel? What could I practice? And I hope it's also inspiring. They're like, wow, I really want to practice something that will feel great or that will make me better. Because... When you do it and it works, it's so confidence building. It's it's liberating. It, once you've transformed a couple of big things about yourself, you're like, wow, I actually could reprogram myself in all kinds of ways. I hope that what I just shared found its place in your creativity and in your heart. Because... It's awesome. Um, okay, so uh, 
a minute or two for any questions or closing comments and then we're going to have our meditation. Creek? So there is the little doubt that what if I, what if my most ultimate choice in the world isn't that good or actually isn't helpful? It's a great question. Um, I've definitely brain programmed some stuff that I regretted later. But if you really dive into it and you get good at changing fast, you do an experiment, you watch carefully, oh, actually that's not that great. What do I want to create instead? That's definitely better than spending more time in the in the old habit. As long as the thing you're creating isn't like actively hurting people. Yeah, I think be creative with life. Be be playful. Try different stuff. Um the more all of us are trying different ways of being and then talking about it, the more everyone gets to be creative and learn from one another. What? You'd spend an hour a day doing laughter meditation and it makes you feel great? Well, I didn't know you could do that. Or you and your friends hug every time you meet each other? Awesome. Or you and your friends never have any contact but you bow and you feel divine love every time you meet? Great. Like the more people experimenting with different stuff, the better. Smile, was that a question? Um, all right. I'm about to guide a meditation and I'd just like to get a feel for everywhere where everyone's at. If you feel like um, today's session was pretty good, can you just like put your hands up or if you feel like making a noise you can be like yeah and if you feel like today's session was great put it up high if you've got like some good and some doubts everyone's doing pretty good yeah excellent all right let's go with a meditation that hits that spot i'm really glad that you guys liked it and uh, for those of you on the live stream thank you for joining us as well so for the meditation i just want everyone to get comfortable and uh, we have um, a baby in the background here. So I'm going to just start with the suggestion that any noises or anything you hear, you're just deciding that it's just going to make you feel more relaxed and more at peace. And the same thing, if you have any thoughts or any ideas that pop up, you just notice them all and just go deeper into peace. Mama, 10-minute meditation starting now. Love you guys. And for those of you who are new to meditation, I want you to think of it as like a daydream. When you're reading a book that you love, the world can disappear and you're fully in the book. Or when you're in VR, you're actually there and the other stuff just disappears. Or if you're in a daydream, suddenly some idea has just captivated you and you're fully there. So meditation is a way of taking us within ourselves. So maybe you can notice right now, like how much are you seeing the VR world or the computer screen? How much are you aware of noises in my world or around you? How much are you feeling other things? And then... As you start to take slower and deeper breaths, you could imagine all that other stuff disappearing. And I invite you to close your eyes as we start to just move within ourselves. And you can notice that my voice, I was excited and now I've slowed down my voice and changed the tone. So do the same thing with your own inner voice. Make the breathing feel peaceful and any thoughts you're having, just slow them down and just imagine the most relaxing, chilled out voice you could imagine.
Maybe you're just thinking to yourself, breathe. Maybe you're thinking lots of things, but just know that you're bringing your mind more into peace. And we'll get to a point where we feel a lot more still and calm. And some of us by now are noticing a sense of relaxation in the body and a calmness in the mind. And I just invite you to take a few breaths to imagine even more of that. What would the body be like to let go completely and your inner voice to become still? And if your mind is doing other things, I just invite you to try to breathe more intentionally. Feel the start of the breath and the end of the breath. And every moment in between, feel the breath and imagine that it's it's all that exists. You're just flowing in the breath, like floating in a stream, and it's just relaxing, peaceful. And now imagine if all day, every day, the way you spoke to yourself was kind, encouraging, and warm. Well, maybe those words don't sound what's best for you. You could imagine the ways you speak to yourself are uplifting or strong powerful just whatever you imagine would be an awesome way of being imagine just always thinking like that and watching carefully how you think and just keep coming back to more helpful thoughts more helpful feelings And sometimes people try to apply mindfulness to really hard things. Let's not start on hard mode. I hope that you make your breakfast more yummy and you make a beautiful day more beautiful and you appreciate your friends in a way that feels better. So many sweet ways to practice making your mind more awesome. So you could imagine all the things in your day just just turned up the happiness volume. You turned up the appreciation. Just practicing through your day loving life.
So that might be where you want to meditate right now. Just keep feeling that positive feeling in lots of parts of your life. But there was a lot that was said today. So you could also meditate on some of those other things. You could imagine dance meditation, doing happiness dancing or confidence dancing or power dancing. You could imagine making each of your conversations filled with love or the mission to enlighten others or the mission to learn from everybody. Right now you could imagine yourself as a fully enlightened being. What it would be like to just be bliss and ease at all times. Every moment guided by a vision of a world where everyone is enlightened. You are just joy and strength and wonder. And you shine that out to everybody. So this couple of minutes, just practice whatever you feel will be really good for you right now. Take some deeper breaths and feel that more powerfully or more beautifully. Every one of us has the ability to be bliss and peace, an enlightened being. I like to say it like there's an enlightened being inside of you. This peace, this calm, give it the love and attention So we're going to finish our meditation with a dedication. You could say this to yourself or you could just think about it. So that we can dedicate that the time we just took, that we it's awesome for us. That we keep practicing the super helpful things. We cherish them. We transform or get rid of thoughts that hurt us or don't help us. We liberate our minds. Not only do we do this as a gift to ourselves, not just as a gift for those around us, but let's do it beautifully and amazingly, massively uplift the world. How can we dedicate ourselves to be as enlightened as possible so that we can free other people? Let's just take some breaths where we just feel love and care for others. (sighs) 
So our closing ritual has been to leave the temple and bow to the enlightened being at the back of the room. And as you do, I want you to bow to the enlightened being within you. Maybe you felt it, maybe you glimpsed it, maybe you experienced it today. Maybe you intellectually realize, wow, I could cultivate that and be it. So bow to it and respect it. Or maybe you can just bow to it that some people have that or that you will get that. And then we walk out, bow to one another, and then it's the social part of our evening. Will you, will you join me to bow to everybody? And then everyone, the live stream, they're all in my eyes right now. So maybe we could just all bow to everybody who joined us. Wonderful. Those of you who joined us on the live stream, thank you so much for being with us. Sending you lots of love and hopefully you can join us again soon on the live stream or here in VR in the Sershin 